Well, hey there, Internet. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Ah, the 90s. Decade of Rob Liefeld, real music, and cinema of highly variable quality. <laughs> and, of course, the high point of Arnold Schwarzenegger's action career. Which brings me to today's topic, Terminator 2. Released in 1991, Terminator 2 ranks as one of the rare sequels that could be considered better than the original. The plot concerns John Connor, a young lad, his mother Sarah, and their mission to avert war between man and machine by destroying the prototypes that would inspire the uber-computer Skynet. So grab your shades and rev your engines for the predestination cluster bomb that is... Terminator 2. Meet John Connor, future saviour of humanity. <laughs> yeah, we're all doomed. On a morning's joyride, this tearaway team comes across a surprisingly insistent police officer. Luckily, he's saved by a familiar face. I love robot and robot violence, mostly because I don't have to censor it. <laughs> John takes off on his bike, but the officer won't be denied. But then the T-800 makes the save again. Naturally, our pint-sized protagonist is more than a little freaked out by this. So what's the deal? My mission is to protect you. <sighs> Wouldn't that just be the greatest, though? Having your own robot bodyguard? Then again... If you had your own robot suit, you could protect yourself just as easily. John's birth mother, Sarah, is incarcerated at the psychiatric hospital. Here's a fascinating fact for you. Earl Bowen, who plays Dr. Silverman in Terminator 2, is also the voice of the dread pirate LeChuck in the Monkey Island games. Small world, innit? It's been six months since her last review, and she seems much more composed. But Dr. Silberman isn't convinced. And when the police inform her of the new T-800, she makes the latest in a series of escape attempts. Come with me if you want to live. But the T-1000 isn't far behind. At a remote fuel station, our future-saving fugitives stop for rest and repairs. Come the morning, they run for the border. On the way, the T-800 briefs Sarah on the history of the future. But his intentions were noble. Yes, this was Miles Dyson's dream. It's just a shame that the military got involved. I'll spare you the rant, let's, let's just move on. And after a terrifying nightmare, there is no fate but that which Sarah Connor makes for herself. Is it really right to kill one man to save three billion lives? Luckily, John and the T-800 arrive just in time. Over a calming drink, the future is explained. I don't think I'd be able to handle a revelation like that. The decision is made to destroy Dyson's research, and so our heroes head for Cyberdyne. But security triggered an alarm. And the police arrive in force! Our heroes recover the chip and the arm of the original T-800. We got Skynet by the balls now, don't we? But then SWAT arrives! Our heroes are long gone when the T-1000 arrives, but it isn't long before the T-1000 is on their trail again. And on we go! And 
so the stage is set for our finale. And a tanker full of liquid nitrogen, along with a good shattering, has done our villain no good. Witness, then, the rewards of a Protector Terminator. So that was Terminator 2. And... I think I'm going to put this one into the House of Love. This is the quintessential 90s action movie. Blood, guns and swearing abound, but very few people really die. Also, this movie raises the hard questions in sci-fi. What is humanity? Can a machine learn how to be human? Is destiny truly inevitable? Of course it doesn't answer these questions, but we can ask them. No, what this movie does, it does brilliantly. It's a big, dumb action movie, and it revels in this fact. And the T-1000 effects were spectacular for the time, and the most ambitious use of CGI since Tron. And though I feel that the director's cutscenes do slow the movie down, they also flesh it out. Just remember, though, that this is not a family film. What it is, is a tightly plotted, action-packed, suspenseful roller coaster ride of a movie, and the high point of the franchise. At least in my opinion. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. Hasta la vista, folks! Hasta la vista, folks! Well, that didn't go too badly. And I did not have to use my bad Terminator voice. But I should switch off the camera before I say these things. <laughs>